getting one decent take from one character. Yeah. Because for every line, you got to realize, like, we're, we're, we're keeping, you know, the voice actors, I mean, they're recording three or four takes of every line. And then we've got to then get them and pick the best one and audio edit all of them and master them. And yeah, that's the time required for that. So, uh, do all the characters need to be different classes or can you go full tank? Um, like, if you were to do that, that stack sure. of three. So, you, you, could, you can have, and I've tried it before, you can have multiples of the same class. I think if you went full tank, you'd probably have a hard time because you run into the classic, like, I can't heal myself. But there are multiple classes that have healing abilities. The way the character progression works is that every level you get a skill point, and so for each class, you have 30 skills across your class of skill trees. So there is a, so you can build, so let's take like a ninja, for example. So we've got ninjas. Our ninjas are more like Naruto ninjas. They use like magic scrolls and like shuriken reins and stuff like that. But you could build, you could have two ninjas in your party and one of them could be using magic scrolls and kind of fulfill like a wizard-like role to do magic damage. And you could have another ninja that was like stabby doing assassin skills. So for a lot of our classes, like you could have multiple warriors in the game and one of them could be you know, go down the tank skill tree and have all the tanking warrior skills and for tossing and like counter attacking and stuff like that. You could have another warrior that goes down kind of like a fury tree. So by having multiple skill trees, you actually can have like more than one of the same class and have them play differently as the game goes on because it's kind of like WoW inspired to be honest with you. It's like you can really spec them however you want. And so you could have three warriors in the front row and I can totally see that working. So, yeah. Uh, I'm having to believe that question. Uh, for real question, what can we gamers expect for the game itself? Jack of all ages is just really Okay, yeah. So, like you said, a, a, a WoW inspired kind of. Like, if, you, if you've if ever played WoW, you know that there's three primary skill trees. Like, I, I played a Torn Shaman, yes. for example. And I was an enhancement champion because I wanted a dual wield and for healing. But yes, I didn't really yep. think that was super important. Yeah. As I progressed in the game, I discovered that nobody wants an enhancement champion yes. except for you. Like, yes. I want to be one because <laughs> yeah. everything else sucks, but yeah. everybody else sees you're a shaman and wants you to be a healer. So. I was a dual wielding with hammers, night elf warrior, which is like completely unoperable, and I just thought it was great. So yeah, so and I it was cool for me to play that yeah. way, but nobody wanted me to be in their party and yeah, yeah. Uh, because I, like, when you actually used it properly, because, yeah. you know, I can still drop totems, I can yeah. still do DPS from a distance, I can yeah. do DPS up front because, oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing wielding, and oh, I can also, like, drop buffs for our more tanky guys. So, um, but what can we gamers expect for the game itself? Now, uh, Vanda, do you mean, like, when can we expect release? Sure, I can talk about that a little bit. So the game is going to be released later on this year. We don't, we haven't announced the release date yet. Um, we're going to be coming to Steam, PlayStation 4, and I actually just found out yesterday we are going to Xbox One. I got my approved email from Microsoft yesterday, so the game was coming. Like, literally, I was at the con, and I was, like, checking my email. I was like, oh, sweet, I got the Xbox One approval. So we're coming to Xbox One as well, so we just got approved, so we haven't announced the release dates yet. We still got to get our dev kits and make sure there's not extra work to do, but we'll be releasing later this year on all those platforms. Uh, any, any like thoughts about like trying to go on Switch? So we actually are released, we are actually approved to release this game on the Wii U. So we got approval for the Wii U before they kind of even began to open up the Switch. And we're in that like second tier of indie devs where we asked to get on the Switch, we were told it's your first game, no, and kind of wait. And then once they actually open up the Switch approval process, we're already a licensed publisher for Nintendo and we'll be submitting. So I would love to release this game on the Switch. I'm hopeful that they'll open it up for other indie devs like us who, you know, don't have other titles that we can call through to get us a reputation get on right away. Um, but I, but even if like that door isn't open until after we launch on the other platforms, I'm like 150% want to bring the game to the Switch. Well, I can, I can totally see like, especially with the Wii U, having that, that the ability to have, you know, this here's my one screen and like maybe check my stats on there yeah. or my mini map is sitting on oh, yeah. there and stuff like that. And that's really what we do with the Wii U is like, is the ability to have this map or something on the second screen as well. Okay, yeah. awesome. nice. And I'm not seeing any new questions. Um, 
So, I know I asked a little bit about this yesterday, yeah. and this, like, I'm turn a little bit so you can get on that. Like, yeah. I just saw that he had set up the Kesson. Yes. Which is like the, the Uber, or one of the Ubers yeah. that you have. Um, the other thing was that there was, like, oh, that's all a... the stats for your individual weapons and rotating through those individual weapons and, like, um, and switching styles. The basically. switching styles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, talk, talk about that. Sure, yeah. So, the, the idea was switching styles, and honestly, it was very Dark Souls inspired. Um, and when I was playing Dark Souls years ago, I was like, I really like how I can have a bow equipped, and I can have a sword equipped, and I can have a shield, and then with one button, I can just switch between my bow. So, really, that's where the, the system comes from. So, your characters can equip literally like a sword, and a shield, and a range weapon. All at the same time and then when you're in combat you just press one button and you just kind of cycle through like sword and shield two hands on the sword pull my bow out and it really helps with the with that whole range system yeah because it's not like i've got to go into a menu after battle and change my equipment it's like no just equip everything and then as you kind of look at each turn and you make the strategic assessment that oh wow there's a wizard in the enemy's back row let me have my warrior switch to my bow it's just one button on your controller and now your warrior pulled his bow out he takes a shot at the wizard in the back row and it didn't take you but nothing but one press to kind of switch between the weapons. Yeah, and I know that that was one of the things that I appreciated was yeah. the fact that I was having like two of my guys were, yeah. were staying with those, those ranged weapons while everybody else was doing that closer attack. But like, uh, as far as as far as weaponry, is there individualized armor for the weaponry itself? Like, I know you can't see it on the on the screen itself, but like in your menus or stuff like that when you're going No, we, we did, so we did like, there's an individual like icon for each weapon type, but we just, you know, Scope Creek didn't have enough time to get icons for every single weapon. And there are like almost 200 weapons in the game. Right. Um, and so it was one of those things in indie dev, you gotta say, okay, do we have the budget and time to make an icon for all of them? And unfortunately, it was a no, and so we had to cut that. Um, how goes the development itself? Uh, uh, how goes the development itself? Like, has it been like a bumpy ride up until this point, or has it been like fairly steep? It's been uh, when you, so when you have a project like this, it's been going for three years. It's been like a roller coaster, really. Um, I'm the primary programmer. I do all the programming, all the game design myself. So you know, I am the funnel through which a lot of the game happens. And so if anything happens in your life as an indie dev and you're the only programmer, that means the game is on halt. I mean, since the game's released, I've like, had all sorts of life events. I got married, my wife's over here. Like, all these life events happen, and then... Who is on. your wife? Oh, my wife is right over there, that's Dana. Her character, <laughs> Seraphine, is actually the dungeon master, so it's based on her. So she is the dungeon master of the dungeon. Nice. That keeps you organized, it's my wife. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I think that, like, you know, because, uh, you know, a lot of the game devs are close to me, it's like, things are going good, I've got a lot of free time, game devs just burn it, right? Uh, things happen, you know, I get sick, I actually had eye surgery last year, last year which is kind of bad as a game dev, because yeah. I couldn't see for a week, so it was like, I had to let everybody on the team know, hey, just so you know, I'm getting eye surgery. So I think it's amazing how, like, as an indie dev, you really have to think about, like, what's going on in your life schedule, because when I had eye surgery, it was like, I had to let everybody in the team know, even the artists, like, if you send me art emails for feedback, like, you're getting nothing, dude, because I literally can't see it for a week because I have eye surgery. So I feel oh, like it's oh, I mean, you could, you could, like, print it off on raised paper and be like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that feels good enough. Feel good? Yeah, you're trying to worry each other. I feel like it's been ups and downs, but a lot of that has been just because when you're an indie dev, you're putting your heart and passion into it, and, and that, you know, things come and go. You gotta adjust. You know? Yeah. Um, did it always look this way in your mind or did it, uh, has this like completely more because I know like when we were talking to uh, uh, Death with Extinction yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt over there yeah, yeah, uh, he yeah, was man, saying that yeah. um, like what he started with in it's his mind is not where they ended so is this like always what you um, saw I'd say the core elements of it like this is a dungeon crawler this has turn based battles this is character creation those kind of main tenets yeah, those are what I saw, but everything in between is not what I saw. And I think a lot of that is because, like, the key to a good game, I feel like, is iteration. Right. And just, like, trying new things. And 
there are a lot of mechanics that I thought would be really cool. Like, I think back in my mind, I originally had this idea that you're going to have like these Pokemon style pets that would follow your party, and every turn you could like summon them, and I was like, this is going to be cool, you'll have this party of adventurers, and the sixth slot in the party will be this like Pokemon style pet. Did it work. But in my mind, I was like, this is going to be a core draw of the game, and then I kind of coded it and put it in front of some people, and they were like, great, that's awesome. So I think there's some, definitely some things like that that maybe think as a dad like yes yeah, it's gonna be totally cool and then you but I think I actually had an iteration of this game about a year before I started this iteration that was completely different and I was like this is gonna be infinite adventures and I worked on a prototype for three months and I was like this game sucks scrapped it and then made this version of infinite adventures so if I go back to that version especially which was like I didn't want to talk about it because it was just bad uh, so yeah I think that as a dad like yeah you go through iterations until you get what's worse oh, good uh, be specific. Will the uh, loot that drops be specific to your team and classes, or will, will it just be like, there's loot in the world? Yeah, so it is more like there's loot in the world, but because because you have this concept that you can have a melee and a ranged weapon equipped at the same time, like a lot of classes can equip a lot of things, right? So I think in a lot of games, it's like if a bow drops, there's only one class for which that bow is useful for. And if you are not an archer in that game, that bow is useful. But in this game, when a bow drops, there's like six classes that can use it, right? And so I think that it, 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 the, the loot system being just a free-for-all works a little bit better when you have a, a party that can equip so many. It really needs a lot of different types of gear to be effective. But it is just like loot drops in it, in, you know, all different types. So, and, and on that note, yeah. uh, like with the variety of loot that will drop, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, this is this is one that, whenever I play any kind of dungeon game yeah, yeah, yeah. in any way, shape, or form, I always have trouble coming to terms with this, this concept, but, like, all games are like, this is totally cool, don't even worry about yeah, it. Yeah. Don't ask any questions. How are you going to sell it off? Like, yeah. are you going to have a storekeeper in the dungeon that's been shut for a million years? Yeah, so you have to come out of the store to sell your stuff. Um, we kind of entertained the idea of having, like, vendors down there, but I just thought that was too much madness. And, and so, yeah, so there basically is, like, an army. Now, the way that the, the, the loot works is it's, like, a material system. So as you find, so really what you mostly find in the dungeon is materials. Right. And then you take those materials and you sell them to the armorer in town and then he unlocks more things in his inventory to sell back to you. So you don't really find very much like old pieces of equipment down there, that's like a rarity. Most of it is like, hey, I found some iron ore, I found some metal scraps, or I killed this enemy, and I got, you know, something from them that they had. Like maybe I killed a, a goblin shaman and he had a bag of crystals. We sell those crystals and now the, now the armor can use those crystals to make a magic wand. So if you're gonna have materials, then are you yes. going to have, uh, <laughs> the characters themselves be able to do that crafting? Like, no. is there an integrated so, crafting system, or is it just, it, it there's all, the one crafting system. And we actually did have an iteration where we tried that, and it was like super crazy com complex, because with six different characters, it's like, there's only one of those characters, classes know how to craft, well now you've created a class that everybody must have, well I think that's boring. And so we kind of tried it different ways, and we said, it's too complex to try to make the crafting system attached to the classes, and so we just said, no, we're just going to move all that like, crafting functionality to the vendor in town, um, and kind of simplify it that way. So if, if, they, if uh, my party needs to go back to, uh, back, back to town, to town yeah. and well, for bad. Yes. Um, how do we get back to town? There is, so you can go out the front door. Uh, <laughs> you can go out the front door of the dungeon, literally, you can just walk out of that. Um, but there are like items that will help facilitate that and also skills. So there are items that you can buy in town that will let you like one use get back to town and open a portal that's designed to take you back to town. Um, but there are also skills that certain classes can learn that allow you to get back to town without a shortcut. Okay. Interesting. I disconnected and reconnected. Um, I, I, don't know if I can just any uh, by anybody. Nope. Uh, only thing was from beta was just saying just take your time, you know, don't rush it. Yeah. You know, basically, you know. That's pretty much what it was. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, guys, any other 
questions, comments, stuff that you want to bring up, uh, let let us know. I love all the questions, by the way. These are great. Yeah. yeah, and and like that was one of the big things that we wanted to do is like this is this is your baby. Yeah. So uh, tell me about your baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know, I don't, I don't know that this is uh, one that I, <laughs> wow. <laughs> My 15 year old came out there for a second. I don't know if this is necessarily one that, that um, I'm Ooh. really a turn based. Yeah. Question uh, from Mal. Questions from Mal. Is there going to be a way to go back to town and then back to the spot where you were? So, like, pop in, pop out? Yeah, so or is it going to be like. Or do you start at the door and once yeah, you come so back? like shortcuts, right? So, as you kind of go deeper, you do like reach like checkpoints that unlock shortcuts that allow you to not have to go back to the front door. Right. So, and those kind of come at a, at, a, at, a, at a periodic state, and usually you have to do something like kill a boss before you unlock one, so you don't just get them for nothing. But as right. you go deeper and you reach like the major decision points where, hey, we just fought a boss and maybe we unlock a new area of the dungeon, then there are shortcut points so that you unlock and you can go back directly to the shortcut so you don't have to track through dozens of dungeons on the back. So, but like with the with the item side of it, yeah. like you mentioned, there's an item that that will be able to be like, "Boof, I'm back in town." Yes. Well, is that like a one time boof, or like is that like Diablo S where it opens that portal that you can go through once and then go back through again? It doesn't do that, but that actually might be something that I might want to think about a little bit because right. that might be a sweet thing to add. It wouldn't be that hard to make it take you back to where you were. Um, right now, it doesn't, but. Actually, a pretty cool idea. I might have to think about. Uh, how many people are helping in making the game? So there, yeah. So right now, let's see. Um, there is myself. There is Justin. Um, if you count all the artists, if you count everybody but voice actors and actresses, it's about nine people. Um, that includes our music composer. We got an awesome guy Ryan. Um, he's composed all the music. So it's about nine people, and then about two dozen voice actors. And actors. Wait a minute, so do you actually have a voice actor that does the little Ghibli noise? That's actually Justin. <laughs> That's awesome! He does the little Ghibli noise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and if they ambush you, they say that. And that's awesome. That's, uh, yeah, so he does that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was one when we were doing the uh, when we were doing the demo and yeah. just started talking to you. Because uh, I don't know that we've seen it in the background. I've mostly been focused yeah, here yeah, as opposed yeah. to over there. Uh, these little like they're gremlin imp looking things yeah. and the noises that they were making had Sinbad just giggling. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, you can play Justin for that. Yeah, no, I think those he was, guys, those I think guys he was drunk to... one day when he got the idea to record this, so. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. And I don't know if he actually heard you say that or if he was answering the other person's question, but as soon as he said, <laughs> yeah, I think he might have been right, he was like, yeah, 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 that was him. <laughs> yeah, he does that. But, uh, well, with, with, uh, with the guy, the amount of people that are working on your team, like, I'm, I'm assuming you're very open to, like, their feedback and, like, this is a great idea, this is a terrible yeah, idea, and I mean, stuff like that. There are some times with, like, let's take, like, characters where I, you know, me and Justin, we come up with, like, a description for this character, this background, anything, this enemy, and then you send it to the artist, and he's like, well, hey, I have some ideas for the lore of this character that might influence, like, an item that they have attached as he's drawing and then trying to interpret. So I think it's very important to just, even though it is my baby, to just be open to everybody's ideas. And a lot of people on the team give feedback, and then that kind of feeds back into the lore of the game design that causes things to change. Um, which I think is totally cool and okay, so that everybody feels like they're contributing. This one tree is Nice. I don't had a question, so okay. Um, I was, I was telling her uh, last night before we went to bed, I was like, I've, I've, I've got the con yunk. And she's like, what's that? And I was like, the deck we got here, and like, I've been, I've been trying to keep distance between, yeah. between people when There's I'm talking to them. There's not enough hand like, sanitizer to get you past the con plague. But I'm just like, happen. my head is stuffed up, and I'm like, you know what, I... I just wear a head, just wear one of the, the hazmat suits. Some people probably have those on already. <laughs> oh, right? oh, yeah. yeah it's I'm, like, I'm, this place is probably I'm sure. Of, I'm sure if we find it up to be like the, the zombie cosplay or somebody's yeah. got at least But like post apocalyptic LARP groups over there, I'm sure they have some. Oh, uh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, well, if you guys 
don't have any more questions uh, that you guys can think of, and we can't think of any at the moment. Yeah, yeah. By the way, we started a little bit early, and we ran like I was. I was figuring like 30 to 45 minutes each. Yeah. One of you yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have to awesome. transfer between the two of them, and like right at 40 yeah, minutes. Awesome. So, yeah, great. Uh, yeah. Thank you again so thank much for so much. Yeah, taking for the time. And once again, yourself, your your yeah. Game. So. So I'm Trendius, my name is Infinite Adventures. You can find us at www.infiniteadventuresgame.com. You'll find links to our Steam page, all the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your social media choice is. You can follow us there. And once again, the game will be up, uh, be out later this year. So fall, winter time on Steam, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, maybe Switch if they open it up by then. We'll see. Oh, but for now, those are the ones that we're coming to. We're excited. Awesome, cool, man. Awesome. So, guys, we're gonna uh, basically take the chairs that we stole back to the tables that they were at. Um, and then we're gonna take a lunch break and uh, we're gonna be back this afternoon starting around 2 yep. uh, when we're gonna be talking to Blue Man and Snow. And lots of, lots of good luck, wishes, and hopeful awesome. for Thanks success so from everybody. Uh, but that's gonna, that's gonna do. That's going to do it for me for this morning, guys. Uh, we will be back this afternoon. All of the information for who we're going to be talking to this afternoon will be pushed out on, uh, on the Discord and on the Twitter. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I raise my glass, which isn't full because I can't drink it here. Uh, I raise my glass to you. Awesome. Bye, Ray. Thanks. And then hit the live button. There should be 